Hey, what's good, fam? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. We lead off tonight with footage of IMG, courtesy of our parent company, Rivals.com. This is of Ja'Cory Brooks. Check out how ridiculous this young man is. Now, five stars want to play with five stars. Let's slow it down and check that out again. That was just magnificent. I mean, this guy coming in, I mean, you got to be thinking these wide receivers so excited to play with Bryce Young in the future, right? Ja'Cory Brooks doing his thing. Okay, you know what time it is, fam. Hit that thumbs up button. We appreciate you guys being here, inching closer towards 50,000 subscribers right here on YouTube. Let's get it. And we open up the footage from Thursday's practice with a look at Jalen Moody. Really excited about what he brings to the table. All these linebackers. I think from a linebacker perspective, I mean, things are right where they need to be. Um, DJ Dale, Landon Dickerson talked about this young man, Will Anderson, who's certainly having a fantastic fall training camp. Will, he's just a guy who came in and you can just tell he's just got it. his confidence. He's just so willing to learn. He just, every he listens, he's a, he's a great player and he's, he's got it. He came in with it. A lot of the young guys have been doing extremely well, um, especially in the defensive front seven. Um, Will Anderson, terrific guy, great athlete. He's done a lot of great things in practice. Um, Tim Smith, extremely good person, great player. You know, he's given good effort. Um, Burroughs, Latham, a lot of those young guys are really starting to get adjusted to college. It does take a little time, but I think now they've kind of been in this system for a little bit. We've been practicing, and every day they come out giving good looks, great effort, and I really appreciate that. Great stuff, obviously, from DJ Zell and Landon Dickerson. Now, in case you missed it in that last frame, this is King Makuta in the black jersey. As you can see, he has a brace on his left knee. Now, we don't know the severity of his injury. We don't know if he's going to be um, ready to go for Missouri. From what we gathered just during fall training camp, he's been injured. So um, we'll keep you posted on a very talented linebacker, outside linebacker at the University of Alabama in King Makuta. Um, but as we were talking about, I mean, this linebacker unit um, – clearly led by Dylan Moses, clearly led by Christian Harris. But there are some younger guys that you're going to see rise up. Um, Demoy Kennedy, uh, William Anderson, guys like this uh, are certainly going to make waves as we inch closer towards this first game of the season. And clearly, William Anderson, probably the freshman MVP, if you had to name one. Um, here's Chris Allen, number four. Everybody expects a lot from him and this young man as well, Ben Davis. This will be a clear opportunity against Missouri to really see what he can do in a game situation. Um, got some footage now of the defensive lineman that was Justin Abogbe. You got a uh, big Stefan Wynn right here, number 90. I think depth overall, um, there's Christian Barmore right there uh, getting, on, uh, getting on the bag. Uh, Phil Mathis, I think overall the depth is very very good, very solid. Byron Young right here, number 47. Um, and, and I like the depth because I think there's uh, Ismael Sopcher because obviously this is going to be a grind. I mean, 10 SEC games, um, throwing an SEC championship, throwing a playoff game, throwing a national title game. I mean, you could be looking at 13 games. So it's all going to come down to depth in the trenches. That's where things happen. That's where you win football games. And I really like where Alabama is from a defensive line standpoint. Really want to see what this defensive line can do in week one, in week two, in week three, because you look at the front four of Alabama schedule. Yeah, you got Missouri, and everybody's talking about a 24-and-a-half favorite. Well, Ole Miss, they're going to be tough. You got Texas A&M, Kellen Munn. He's going to be tough to deal with. He's done a great job against Alabama the last two seasons. Then you got uh, Georgia. All those schools, I, I think the three out of the four, are going to be challenging for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Point being, the front end of that schedule is going to provide a lot of opportunities for the defense to prove just how good they are, just how good they want to be. Where is the bar going to be set from week one going into the season? I think when you look at the defense, you can see that they're playing with fire in their eyes. But if you listen to Nick Saban, they obviously are not where they need to be. And this is critical going into week one. So let's keep tabs on the defense as we go into week one. Um, Got your daily dose of the offensive line. Looks like Evan Neal doing his thing right here. Really excited to see him at the tackle position. Darian Dalcourt, um, number 71. Continue to hear great things about him as just a sophomore. He's going to be certainly one of your leaders as we go forward um, with next year's class. That was Amari Cott right there. As we move into the photo gallery section of this video, this is Stefan Wynn. And we've talked about Wynn before. Um, he's going to provide a lot of depth with that defensive line. One guy that I want to see from a coaching standpoint is Freddie Roach. And how is he working with this defensive line unit? How is he meshing with these guys? Is he going to have a good mix of run stuffers and guys who can get after the quarterback? I think Stephon Wynn could be both of those guys, probably more of a run stuffer. Um, but I think this is a great year for Stephon Wynn to prove what he can do. As we move to um, a photo of Xavier Williams, we've talked about him plenty of times, right? 
that fourth wide receiver. And I don't think you should get caught up if, if he's number four, if he's number five. Point is, he's improving his game. He's creating value for himself, as Nick Saban likes to talk about. Um, clearly, he's doing a great job in fall training camp, and we're going to see lots of him uh, this season. This is a great shot right here. Um, just some great photos that we're going to see today on this uh, photo slideshow. This is a Jalen Waddle. Um, how many yards do you think Waddle goes off for total against Missouri? Put that in the comment box. That would kind of be the question of the night. Um, you think he can get um, 150 all-purpose yards, maybe more, maybe two touchdowns? You know, we used to play fantasy football on Yahoo. They don't, they're not having that this year, unfortunately, but that was really fun. Um, here's a look at Brandon Turnage, a redshirt freshman at Alabama. This will be a good opportunity for him to create some sort of value for himself. I think he's working with the twos. Haven't really seen too much from, from him. I haven't heard a lot about him. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's just sometimes you hear about players, and sometimes you don't. Um, so we'll keep you posted on Brandon Turnage, and maybe we can just see this together come next Saturday when Alabama plays Missouri. All right, so you got a great photo here of Devontae Smith, and we can't say enough about Devontae Smith going into the season. Don't forget how talented this young man is. I think if you're an Alabama Crimson Tide football fan out there, you understand how special this young man is, um, what he's done at Alabama, over 2,000 yards receiving throughout his career. He had 1,200 yards last year. Most humble guy you'll ever speak with. Um, just everything about a businessman, right? Just puts his head down, goes to work. Um, another guy that I think is going to have a great year is Brian Robinson. Now, he's not going to be your guy who uh, is getting that preseason notoriety like Najee Harris, and that's okay. Everybody has a role on this team. And I think now with him being a senior, he's going to find ways to get the football. I think he's going to be really effective in red zone situations. I think he's a guy that can pound the rock. I think he's a guy that Alabama can certainly lean on if Najee Harris has to come out for a blow or two. That, that running back room is incredible. I feel it's the best running back room in the entire country. I mean, look from, from head to toe. Najee Harris, Brian Robinson, Trey Sanders, Jace McQuellen, Kyle Edwards, Roy Dell Williams, Point being, fam, the running back room can carry this team if need be. Now, I know that um, Alabama has some very talented quarterbacks who should be able to distribute the football to the very talented wide receivers. But I think this team, if they needed to be built um, in, in game situations to have possession minded football, they can obviously do that. It's all going to start right here, as I talked about earlier in the video with the defensive line. Now, the defensive line has to come in, has to play ferocious. LeBron Ray, a lot of people want to see production from him this year. Clearly, he only played in four games last year dealing with a foot injury. Now is the time. This is the opportunity for this defense to make noise, to show the nation that it is an improved defense. The defensive line, I really feel, has to get a pass rush. I think over the years, Alabama has done a fantastic job stuffing the run, probably better than any team in college football. But where they have lacked is getting heat on the quarterback. LeBron Ray... From what I've seen during fall training camp, from what I've heard during fall training camp, he's playing like a man on fire. So you have him, you have Christian Barmore, you have DJ Zell, you have Stephon Wynn, Justin Abogbe, guys that can give Alabama depth up front in the trenches on the defensive side of the ball to really put heat on the quarterback, to do what they need to do going into this pivotal early season stretch. I think a great performance by the defensive line could really set the tone, honestly, for the rest of the season. I want to see quarterback sacks. I want to see heat on the quarterback. And if they don't do that, I don't feel it's going to be an effective defense. And they need to address that immediately if that's not the case. Um, Dylan Moses, a guy that is the anchor. I mean, every single time we talk about Dylan Moses, I mentioned the anchor. And that was something that missed, that Alabama's defense missed during last season, right? Having this guy's overall intelligence out on the field has to give everyone on the defensive side of the ball, everyone on the team, such a peace of mind, being that he's the leader on that defensive unit. Um, here's a great shot of Alex Otherwood. He's back at practice. I know a lot of people were asking, where is Alex Otherwood? Look, some of these guys miss for whatever the case is. Um, and um, it, all you need to know is he's back. So rest easy because you have your two um, tackles coming in this game healthy. Evan Neal, Alex Otherwood. Um, looks like Landon Dickerson probably going to be playing the center position, I would assume. So that would mean Emil Ikior at guard, um, along with Deontay Brown at the other guard position. And I think that's a great offensive line to start off this season. Um, here's Des Moy Kennedy, a guy that we've heard great things about. Um, 
we've talked about it all fall training camp. This is the 20th video that we've put together. Um, Des Moines Kennedy, William Anderson, Drew Sanders. Actually, I don't think we have a photo of Drew Sanders. Alabama, if you're hearing me, can we please get a photo of Drew Sanders? Um, Chris Broswell, all those guys fall into that category of special outside linebackers for the Alabama Crimson Tide that are just freshmen. All right, you got quarterback Mac Jones coming into this season. How do you think he's going to fare in week one? I know it's a hypothetical question, but with so much talent around him, you got to think it's a plug and play. I would say 225 yards, three touchdowns. Now, it's hard to put expectations on anybody, but I think with the firepower that he has, with the offensive line that's in front of him, it's going to be hard for him not to be productive in week one. I think Alabama starts off hot, um, as they usually do, and I think Mac Jones uh, makes a believer out of people who don't really feel confident in his abilities. So, um, big game expected for Mac Jones, at least in my opinion. Um, this is a great shot. All right, what I want you to focus in on is the overall aggression that this team is playing with right now during practice. There's Najee Harris running the football. And as you can see, I, I mean, it's full go. I mean, these guys aren't holding back. And um, in my opinion, the season has already started for these guys. So they're hungry to face another opponent. They've been beating each other up for 20 days of fall training camp. So I, I mean, look at this. Look at the eyes. This is Christian Harris. This is a sophomore linebacker, a sophomore starter, Alabama. Look at the eyes, poised, ready, focused, lasered in, understands his job, starting inside linebacker next to Dylan Moses, both those guys out of Baton Rouge. I think when you look at Christian Harris, he's a younger version of Dylan Moses. And I think when Dylan Moses leaves Alabama, yeah, it's going to be painful for the defense. But I think the bright spot is that Christian Harris is going to anchor and hold that rope in Dylan Moses' place. Landon Dickerson, we had the opportunity to hear from him uh, earlier today. Great spokesman overall for the university. I, I think this guy really emulates leadership. Sure, yeah, he gets down and dirty with the offensive line against the defensive line. He may get a penalty or two, but I think that the way he plays is what you need as not only a leader, but that's kind of the alpha of that offensive line, and that's the guy who it needs to be. And he's going to be that center position. So I like the way it sets up. As you could see, Landon Dickerson at the center position right here into the left of him, that's Deontay Brown. So that tells us that Deontay Brown at that left guard position, and I would assume the right guard is Emil Ikior. That's a great um, setup for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And I think it's really set up for, you know, road grade football, which is the ability to give Alabama a very productive running game. Najee Harris running behind Landon Dickerson, Deontay Brown, Emil Ikior with the tackles, Alex Otherwood, and Evan Neal. Yes, please, right? I bet Najee Harris is so excited to have this offensive line to rush behind because it's really a running back stream to have these guys. I mean, look at, look at Deontay Brown. I mean, when you look at Deontay Brown, this guy, if we rewind a couple of years ago, man, he just couldn't manage his weight that effectively. And I think as time went on, it was really admirable to see his transformation as a player. I think it takes a lot of self-control to get your mind right, to get your body right. And this is a young man who did that. And now he's starting at Alabama. This will be the second year that he starts. And he's so important to Alabama's rush game. Um, here's a great shot of Slade Bolden. Everybody wants to see Slade Bolden get out on the field. I think he's a fan favorite. Played last year in, in several games. Big time playmaker. Really liked him at that wildcat position, the Slade Cat. Um, when you look at that fourth wide receiver, it's gonna, it could be him, could be Xavier Williams, could be Javon Baker. I think any of those guys, when they have their opportunity, are going to shine. One thing that I really appreciate about Slade Bolden is his route running abilities. Just, I mean, if, if you've seen previous highlights of Slade Bolden, just for a minute, just look at his clean, precise routes. Really, really impressive. Okay, you got number nine. This is Jordan Battle. I mean, talk about a, a leader as just a sophomore. Some people say sophomore, sophomoric. I don't think so. I mean, this guy has everything that you want as a leader in the secondary. He'd be a starter as just a sophomore. I mean, think about it. Christian Harris starting at the inside linebacker as a sophomore and Jordan Battle back there as well. Um, this is a great sign right here. This is Jalen Armar Davis. Um, suffered a, a knee injury when he first got to Alabama. Didn't really see too much of him last season. Um, I'm not sure if, if he was injured of some sort. I, I think that, you know, there was a time where he 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 wasn't at fall training camp. Um, but this is great to see him right here because I, I think that he could get on the, on the field. Um, local product for Mobile and, um, you know, has a lot of talent. So adds depth to that secondary. So, so really gra glad to see this photo right here of Jalen Armour Davis and a guy that I think 
as we continue to move forward, there, he's going to find some some value for himself, obviously, and he's going to get on the field, which is great. Um, one of these last photos is of Chris Allen. We talked about him before. I'm um, at the outside linebacker position. I would assume his backup is William Anderson. So um, you have Ben Davis and Christopher Allen that are your starting outside linebackers for the Alabama Crimson side. And then um, probably the twos, it's probably going to be um, William Anderson and, and Drew Sanders. Now, with Drew Sanders, as I already said, that I don't have footage of him. I don't have a photo of him. Um, but he was actually working with inside linebackers during Alabama's last scrimmage, which is a, a pretty big nugget, right? I think that says a lot about his overall athleticism. I know he played tight end at the prep level, but um, let's see what Chris Allen could do on game day. I, hopefully he can get some heat on the quarterback because Alabama certainly needs to be effective in their pass rush. All right, fam, it's time for our freshman spotlight. And today we're going to spotlight a defensive tackle out of the state of Georgia. And you got Jamil Burroughs, six foot three, 326 pounds. This is one guy that we've heard really good things about as a true freshman. This is a guy who came in. He's a monster already, right? I, I think that he's going to get on the field during his freshman season, help Alabama's rush defense. You look at him, you look at Ismail Sopshire, guys that should be first-year players. I know Sopshire redshirted last year, but as you know, it's so important, it's vital to have defensive tackles that can plug up the middle. Jamil Burroughs, certainly one of those guys. Well, fam, I hope you enjoyed our fall training camp coverage right here on BamInsider.com. Um, 20 videos. It was fun. We broke it down. I hope you guys um, liked our video coverage right here on BamInsider.com. Please subscribe for future content. we got some great stuff coming your way as it's game week next week as Alabama takes on Missouri. Reporting from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, it's your boy Kyle Henderson. We'll catch you next time.